Good evening. I'm uh, Dr. Robert Haley, and I'm uh, a medical epidemiologist, and I'm uh, representing the 7,000 physicians of the Dallas County Medical Society and the 45,000 physicians of the Texas Medical Association and reflecting their long-established uh, official policies on this subject. Uh, back, uh, we've been studying this uh, for about 13 years. Uh, two and a half years ago, we finally uh, submitted a petition for real change to the TCEQ to uh, ask them to change their policy in order to control emissions from these uh, East Texas coal-fired power plants. Two months later, they rejected our petition, but interestingly, not on the merits, the scientific merits, but uh, saying that it was premature in view of the fact that they had a SIP coming up and that they would address it in the SIP. But then, of course, when the SIP came out, the issue had been ignored and not addressed. There was no effort to control the emissions from these coal-fired power plants. Uh, <clears throat> then, uh, in those hearings where we testified on behalf of our petition, uh, we were surprised and, and actually perplexed that the commissioners and uh, their senior staff scientists uh, were stating their opinion that current levels of ozone, 70 to 80 plus parts per billion, do not hurt humans and in fact are actually beneficial to humans' lungs. Accordingly, we undertook a review of the scientific literature on that point and then established a collaboration with environmental chemists at the University of North Texas to estimate the actual health effects and the costs, economic costs, of ozone to the DFW non-attainment area. Recently, Dr. Curabilla John of the UNT, University of North Texas, concluded his part of the study in which he used the same computer modeling approach and the same air quality data used by TCEQ scientists in modeling ozone levels for the SIP. He found that the large antiquated coal-fired power plants in East Texas contribute an average of five parts per billion to the DFW ozone area, uh, uh, or their levels. Given that DFW's current ozone design value is 83 parts per billion, and we must reduce it by eight parts per billion to get down to the old standard of 75, and we'll have to reduce it 13 parts per billion to meet the new standard of 70. The five parts per billion contributed by these coal-fired power plants could be eliminated by controls on those plants, and we believe this should have been a centerpiece, should be a centerpiece of the SIP. Now, for the Dallas County Medical Society's part of the study, we used EPA's benefits mapping computer modeling approach to estimate the health benefits of a reduction of five parts per billion, which contributed by these coal-fired power plants in the DFW area, ozone levels, that would result from the controls on these East Texas coal-fired power plants. This approach applies the most rigorous scientific studies of the effects of different levels of ozone to current daily ozone uh, values throughout the DFW area. So our analysis showed that a reduction of five parts per billion in the ozone levels in the 10-county DFW non-attainment area would prevent, every year it would prevent, 165 hospital admissions, 350 emergency room visits, 150,000 restricted activity days where people can't go about their regular duties and work, 120,000 school absences, and 77 deaths per year from lung and heart disease catastrophes with an economic valuation to the area of over $500 million, and this is every year. For, 34, for the 34 counties who, that are downwind, in other words, over and above the 10 counties and on attainment, but if you look at all 34 counties downwind from the coal-fired power plants, uh, the toll would amount to 97 deaths per year, prevented by a five part per billion reduction, and six, $650 million of economic value every year. And I have submitted my testimony and written